then there's a connection there's an interaction in the spirit realm and all of a sudden he began to empower us and equip us uh, equip us so that we can begin to be reminded i am spirit being that's who i am i belong to jesus christ uh, i'm a true son of god let's give god some praise hallelujah Our focus may get cloudy, our vision may be blurred, but when we worship God, it brings things back into focus. Hallelujah. It brings things back into focus. Uh, and then the second thing is worship equips our spirit. This is what God said. Worship equips our spirit. Well, what do you mean equips our spirit? It equips us. For better warfare, when we worship God, strength come into our being. If you don't believe it, try it. Worship God so your spirit gets strengthened. And then when you, you can be in the same setting and worship for a few minutes and then go back, in, oh, and when you go back into warfare, then there's strength in your loins. Hallelujah. And that's the strength of the God because he empowers you when you begin to worship him. And then uh, uh, worship, in, uh, it also empowers us for spiritual activity. In other words, it helps us to be alert and be able to bring uh, help to saints. You cannot know who has needs other than God making it clear to us, right? But I've found and discovered through experiential knowledge, when I get lost in worship, all of a sudden... God began to reveal to me certain needs, and he also instructs me at the same time what to do. Sometimes he'll say, go visit. Sometimes he'll say, do this. Sometimes he'll say, pray. Sometimes he'll say, call him up and pray. But whatever the need is, so it equips us for spiritual activity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Worship is important because there's, uh, uh, worship is just so powerful. That's what I heard the Holy Ghost say. He said worship is so powerful. So it em empowers us for warfare. If you're having a struggle and you're fighting in your warfare and battling and feel like you're getting tired, and you can't seem to uh, make any headway, change your warfare into worship. Begin to worship God. And as you begin to worship God, your spirit will mount up. The strength come into your loins, hallelujah, and you'll begin to speak or to, to intercede in a greater capacity by the Spirit of God. So God is our helper. Worship is so powerful, hallelujah. And, um, and then thirdly, worship heightens our awareness of our true identity. It heightens our awareness as to our true identity. The Bible says God is spirit, right? Are you with me? God is spirit and we are spirit. The flesh profits nothing, right? We're spirit beings and we've been born of the spirit. And since we've been born of the spirit, the Bible, Jesus said it is the spirit that quickens it. It is the spirit that gives life. It is the spirit that lives. The flesh, this flesh profits hardly nothing, right? And so the, it is the spirit that God breathes into us, that, 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 that we've been recreated or reborn again. It's that spirit man. So that's who we are. And as we understand now that we are spirit beings, uh, we live in a body, right? And we have a soul. It's like a turtle. But our true sense or our true nature is we are spirit beings. And sometimes it's easy to forget that we're spirit beings. But when we pause and begin to worship and adore 
God who is spirit. And as we worship him, then there's a connection. There's an interaction in the spirit realm. And all of a sudden he began to empower us and equip us, uh, equip us so that we can begin to be reminded, I am spirit being. That's who I am. I belong to Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm a true son of God. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Worship. Focus upon God. Worship is higher than praise. Praise is important, but so is worship. Worship goes beyond the outer court. I can praise him in the outer court, right? I can praise him because, him, you know, anybody, everybody have breath can praise him, right? But worship, worship deals with significance. I am a spirit being. I was born again. I was born of God. And that's who I am. I'm a new creation. Hallelujah. And I'm made for God's purpose. My reason for existence on this earth is not what I can get out of it, but it's what God can do through me. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so as I was thinking and praying and talking to the Lord, I said, God, um, why this message? Why this message to the Hampton Road area? Why this message to the outskirts of North Carolina and as far as, as, far as the broadcast may reach? Why? What is it? What do you want to get through? What is the reason, you know, for, for this? And God said this to me. He says, it is to heighten our level of reverence and respect for God. So it's they, those that are listening to us by way of television. He's saying it is to heighten our Level of reverence and respect for God. Somebody say, oh, I love God. I respect God. But wait a minute. Let me finish. And he began to remind me what David said. He said to the Lord when God found him out and dealt with him about his sin. He repented. And then he says, you desire truth. In the inward part. You see, it's the inward part that the Lord is looking at. Isn't that right? Uh, he ain't looking at this old outer court. You know, I, I, look, I can, I, can, I can get before you and I can and sing and I can shout and I can confess and do all those things. But the Lord ain't looking at that. He's looking at my innermost being. That's what he's looking at. The Bible says man looks on the outward appearance, right? I said, oh boy, they're spiritual. But the Bible said, the Lord looks on the heart. It is the heart where God is looking. Ah, it is the heart, brothers and sisters. And as I was thinking about it, he took me on. He began to talk to me. See, God, uh, uh, let, let me share a little with you. And I want you to really get this. Because it is to the messengers first, right? So as I was uh, thinking about this, God had just brought me through something. Now, and one of the things that brought me through is there's some certain things, oppressions, that would not leave. I've done all the praying I know how. I done the, did the fasting that I knew how. I, done the, I, done, I did the confession and all of this stuff, right? But the oppression didn't leave. Are you hearing me? And after some time, some years, it start, started to seep into the inward parts. Are y'all hearing me? There's a little dissatisfaction. You got to go with me now because I'm, 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 I'm taking you somewhere. And so, and... Because there was some dissatisfaction on the inward parts, 
On the outside, I'm praising and thanking the Lord. You know what I'm saying? But on the inside, there was some resentment going on. Somebody said, oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because I was a little tired of not getting the help. And sometimes when we get beside ourselves, we begin to look at God with a eye that's not so pleasant. You know what I'm saying? You ain't doing nothing and you letting this happen. And you keep on letting it happen. So what is the problem, God? Y'all hear what I'm saying? So as I went through that and, 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 and God, God said, I'm going to, I'm going to free you up and put some joy in your soul. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? He said, I want to free you up and put some joy in your soul. And uh, so it was like, you know, he was looking at the inward man. You couldn't see it, right? But God could. And so as he was dealing with me and began to, and, and one day it just got this very frustrating. And I had a few little uh, words with the Lord that was not hallelujah. <laughs> Y'all hear what I'm saying? Because I was bothered. And I couldn't understand why he kept allowing it to happen. It just, it, my understanding would fail me. And so because my understanding failed me, I began to get a little bothered. And a few words would come out and I'd repent and say, Lord, just forgive me. So, so. And that went on back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Then how do you know that when it keeps going back and forth, back and forth, you ain't got the help that you need. You haven't got the healing that you need. You haven't gotten the deliverance that you need. But the day came when God began to reveal to me, I got tired of missing it, got tired of Going back and forth, you know, and, 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 and then when I got to the end of myself, then I cried out to God. And as I cried out to God, he began to heal and he began to deliver from that thing. And he began to, he began to purify. He began to purify. And can I tell you something? It felt so good. The, the cleansing feels so good. You don't see things like you were looking at them before. Because there, 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 was, there was some distortion. And, you know, and, and sometimes when, when the distortion comes, guess who hang, is hanging around to further exacerbate your cause? It is the enemy of deception. Before you know it, he's whispering things to you, and you're listening to them, and you shouldn't be listening to them. Anybody hear what I'm saying? But God broke it. God healed me. And it's been helping. It's been, and, and, and I, I was reminded, I begin to sense and feel that, that love like I felt. 30 some years ago I began to feel that love that nothing was greater than to please my savior uh, you, 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 you got to hear what I'm saying because hallelujah it, it's been a long time there and as I, I and, and I was riding down the road thanking the Lord said God this is so right this is, this is so good this, this is so good God the Bible says no uh, test and chastening is pleasant, right? At the time, it's oppressive and frustrating, grievous, right? But afterward, the Bible declares that it yields the peaceable fruits of righteousness. God chastened us. For the cause of bringing us after his holiness and after his righteousness. 
And oh my God, I tell you, and I just want to encourage you. But it was after that he began to heal and caused me to see clearer that he began to, uh, that my worship got so much sweeter. He desires truth in the inward part. And this is what he said. He said, trials and oppressions and persecutions and afflictions have distorted our views and perception of God. He said, that's why I want you to talk about worship. And so, the true worship is not coming forth as it ought to come forth. But God wants to heal where you and I have been in a problem and situation so long until we're frustrated and the frustration overwhelms us so that we cannot rejoice now like we should we cannot respect and reverence and admire him like we should and that right because the oppression has been so long and so heavy and all of a sudden now there's a distortion in our perception and the devil comes and begin to say see god's upset with you god god's angry with you that's why he's doing this you but no god's not angry the saints of god when god gets angry everybody's gonna know it are you hearing what i'm saying god's not angry i remember one day I was upset with the Lord, and, and I said, well, God is so-and-so, and I had this mind. This was years before bed had passed, and while she was ill, and I felt that was a, yeah, he's angry with you. And so I'm, I'm pouting, I'm mad. And my father, who was living, he's dead and gone now, he called me up, and he had this really amazing way of speaking the mind of God and not even thinking what he's saying. Yeah, he's good at that, you know, and... Uh, so he, he was talking, and he said, you know, you know, you talking about God is, God is angry with you. God ain't angry with you, brother. If God was angry with you. And he was just going on. I said, whoops, he, he knows where I am. I don't know who told him this year, but, but he was making a point. It was God speaking through him. He said, don't, don't, don't misconstrue who God is. God not angry with his own children. God loves his children. He loves us. Oh, yeah, he wants us to get it because, uh, you know, he wants us to worship him, right? He wants pure worship. He wants true worship, right? And as we worship God, hallelujah, oh, it's so good. Then the Lord pipes in that glory and that power and that presence. And, oh, man, you, you, you're having a feast. You're having a feast every day. It just gets better and better and better. And then your heart can rejoice God wants to bring joy to his body. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the last thing that he made me see, that their purpose is in trial. Trials don't just happen. 1 Peter 5, it's the last scripture I'll give them to you now. 1 Peter 5, he, verse 10 He says, first he said, be sober and vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, or whom resist, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. We're all going through. Isn't that right? Everybody is facing something of some kind. Verse 10 says, but the God of all grace which hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After ye have suffered a while, Lord have mercy. Glory to God. Mm. Did you get that? After you've suffered a while. No, 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 no. Don't try to don't try to abort the process. Don't, don't, don't try to stop him. He said, after you've suffered a while. I said, oh, I've had it, I've had it, I've had it, I've got enough. No, you haven't. God says, after. You've suffered a while. This is, God is the one who determines whether or not you've had enough. Oh, Lord, somebody got to hear me today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. After you've suffered a while. Mm, 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 mm. Glory to God. This is what he said. Make you perfect. Perfect 
That word in Greek, to complete thoroughly, to repair, and to adjust. Lord Jesus. You know, when I get bent out of shape, because the trials have come. They've distorted my views and my perception of God. Made me upset with some, some bodies or, or some of my, my relatives and loved ones. I'm upset and a little upset. And so there's a distortion. And then he comes. He said, after. Not before. After. You've suffered a while. Then here comes God. And he makes you perfect. He repair those hurts. He heal those wounds. Ha ah, ha, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And then he said, establish you. To set, it means to set fast. And it means to turn resolutely in a certain direction. He changed our sense of direction. You know, sometimes... We may not be seeking the kingdom like we should, right? You know, you know how that goes, right? I'm loving the Lord, but I'm really, really not trying to pursue his kingdom, you know. I'm, I'm, you know, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. But after you've suffered a while, begin to heal you. Then begin to turn you. You know, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to work every day. I'm doing my thing. But it turns you in a certain direction. David said, my heart is fixed. Trusting in the Lord. Right? I found out that I I can't ignore what he says and do well. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I, I, I can't. I found out that I can't pick and choose what I what I'm gonna obey. Y- y'all hear what I'm saying? It, w- it was the suffering that brought me to this realization. When I I found out every time I found up, then it brought me to the point where I understand that when God speaks, He means exactly what He says. Uh, see, I had to come to that point in my life. You hear what I'm doing? I thought, well, I said, okay, well, I didn't say that, but I didn't do that. But you know, Lord, I, you know, you know, uh, you, you, you know. But it had to bring me to the point, like he's bringing us to the point, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by a few words that come from God. By a few special revelations that come from God. And so we cannot ignore when God's talking to us. So it's bringing us to the point that we can reverence and honor when he talks to us. And then, so to set us fast, to set us for, and I remember, when I remember when God told me that, I was going through, he said, he said, I'm trying to establish you. And I didn't know what he was talking about. I'm trying to set your heart up on sound Bible principles, biblical principles. The Bible says, give and it shall be given to you, right? The Bible said, love, he didn't say love and you'll be loved, but love, right? So that's what we got to do, isn't that right? And uh, so the setting our hearts determined to live our lives according to the will of God. It has to come to that, saints. And uh, trials will continue to happen until after we've suffered a while. After we've suffered a while, when God sees that we've learned and our hearts are tender to obey him here comes healing here comes healing here comes repairing and then you heard and even last Sunday a testimony from Pam was sharing the testimony she began to examine self you don't mind my referring to you she began to examine self and as she began to examine self, obviously she found some things that God wasn't pleased with. And that's what examination should do, right? You know, I don't need to look at you and say, you ain't doing this and you ain't doing that. I just need to do self-examination first. And after that, and God purify my heart, then I can see clearer. But the funny thing about it is, after he's, uh, I've examined myself, and God has dealt with my heart, 
I'm not interested in examining nobody else. That's the amazing thing about it. <laughs> and then he said, not only to establish you, he said to strengthen you. It means bodily vigor, and it also implies confirming in knowledge and, um, and knowledge and understanding to confirm. So after that, he began to confirm us, confirm us again. Paul went to and confirmed the churches. After a certain amount of time, he went to confirm the churches all around. They began to, so they began to experience God again, some of the things that God had said. Then finally, he said to settle you, to lay a basis for, to build, to erect, or to build. After those things, he said, he settled you, strengthened you, established you, began to build now. Not only repair, but he began to build up, build you up again. Hallelujah. And as he began to build us up, the places where we've been torn down, he began to establish us in a way that others will begin to see that those people, God has had his way in their lives. All the friends and relatives begin to see the change because God is building that. He's building our lives. He's a great God, saints. But it starts, he wants us to be able to worship him. So I ask him, why worship? But he said, perception and views have been distorted as a result of the trials and the afflictions, persecution, and things that he didn't move right away. So if you're here today, and you know, and, it, and you can relate to what we just shared. And you say, well, yeah, that, 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 uh, that, that sounds like where I've been. Maybe you're beyond that point. But if there's someone here, and you say, yeah, that's where I'm at now. Then I want you to know that God doesn't throw us away. He doesn't give up on us. He'll be there for us. But he is getting getting us to the place where he can display us like he want us in the marketplace and wherever people are found and in these last days when, when the closing days of the church when things are just helter skelter God is working on his church God is working in his church hallelujah to show forth his wonderful love and kindness and I saw your 